So 18 months and 17,000 miles. That's how long we've had our 2018 Ford Raptor. And that's also how far we've driven it during that time. Now it's been a little while since I actually did a video on the Ford Raptor as it is a truck that I surprised my wife with. <laughs> it really? Really? <laughs> oh my God, oh my God. I don't really see it all that often, but now just like one year ago when I did the last video or owner review update on the Ford Raptor, all the girls in the family, and that's mommy, Sydney, and Grammy, they're in Disney and I'm never allowed to come because it's girl power. So I figured it'd be a perfect moment to do a little update on the Ford Raptor, how our ownership experience have been, and uh, basically if uh, it was worth it to buy this truck. First off, I mean, just look at this thing. Uh, it is such a good looking truck. And I don't care if you're a Ford, Chevy, Dodge person or whatever, if you set all that aside, you cannot argue with the looks of the Ford Raptor. This is how it comes out the box. But just look at it from the front. There are numerous regular F-150 owners who have upgraded to the Raptor grill, myself included, on their regular F-150s. But this is not a regular F-150. This is the top dog, the Raptor. Yeah, you gotta have those DRLs on. It looks so good with the amber and the three lights up front here in the grill as well. The same goes for the rear end of the Raptor. We got a big Ford badge, obviously, stating that it's a Raptor right here. Not specific to the Raptor, but we do have blind spot information system integrated in to the taillight, which just makes the taillight look very beefy. Uh, a lot of F-150s, Lariat and above trim, get these taillights and they just fit a Raptor because everything is beefier. Just take a look at the Raptor from this angle here. We got wider fenders in the rear and also in the front. A Raptor is six inches wider than a regular F-150. But many of you guys watching this video today uh, probably know a lot about this Raptor already because it's been on the channel, like I mentioned, for 18 months. But if this is your uh, first time bumping into this channel here and you don't really know anything about this truck, we'll quickly just mention its options and everything and then we'll get out on the road and talk about what the ownership experience has actually been like. So the color is... So apologize the uh, raging chihuahuas in the background here somewhere having a barking fest, but the color of the Raptor is called Leadfoot Gray, and I absolutely love this color because it hides dirt <laughs> really, really well. Now, I have cleaned up the truck for today's video, but normally when it is really dirty, you can't really tell. That's what I love about this color. Now, since the last owner review we did on the truck, we've added some extra Baja Designs lighting, which looks really good. I love that. We also added a tonneau cover. I'm pretty sure we didn't have that in the last video and that's been holding up pretty good as well. The truck has the 802A package, which basically means that it is fully loaded. It's got all the features that come on a higher trim level F-150, except for massaging seats and stuff like that. That's not available for a Raptor. You have to go to the King Ranch Platinum and the Lariats and stuff like that. But we got a 360 camera, Got heated, cooled seats, remote start, of course. Got the big panoramic moonroof. Leather seats with the Raptor embroidment. The leather seats, this is, you know, the passenger seat, but we'll walk over here. The leather seats have been holding up really well for a year and a half. I mean, we're in and out of this truck constantly. As you guys can see here, it's in good condition, as it should be. I mean, the truck isn't that old. And if you didn't know already, a Raptor has the three and a half liter high output EcoBoost engine producing 450 horsepower and 510 pound feet of torque. Now, obviously, a big disappointment when uh, Ford introduced a Gen 2 Raptor is that it didn't have a V8. It's now a six cylinder with two turbos. And while there's nothing wrong with this engine, it's very powerful, very torquey, that's never been the issue. It's that it doesn't sound like a Raptor is supposed to sound like because of how awesome it looks. We'll talk more about that as soon as we get out on the road here. Now, while I love the color of our Raptor here, my absolute favorite part of this truck is the suspension. We got three inch Fox shocks and bypass valve, of course, 13 inches of suspension travel up front, 13.9 
in the rear and combined with the 17 inch wheels and BF Goodridge all-terrain KO2 tires. It makes this truck the, the best ride ever. It's the best riding vehicle I've ever driven. Whether you're off-roading like the Raptor is made for or you're taking long road trips like we've done several times back and forth to Florida, we've gone to Kentucky and back and so on, it's the perfect highway cruiser and I absolutely love it. Plenty of room in the back as this is a crew cab. Sydney has her little power outlets here for iPads and such. We actually got the full power outlet here and then uh, two USB ports and a 12 volt and like it's impossible to run out of batteries for a kid back here. But the Ford Raptor has been around for a little while now and I'm sure this isn't the first Raptor video you guys are watching on the internet. So we're just gonna jump inside and uh, we'll talk about the most important thing and that is what it's like to drive and what it's been like to drive for 17,000 miles. Yeah, it's not much of a growl. <laughs> good traction. All right guys, so as you could tell, my external mic is all messed up, so audio was horrible. So we're gonna do one more pull here from inside the truck. wheel spin we'll see what time we got 6.8 and that's because of the wheel spin of course so we're gonna try that again we just connected all-wheel drive here so we should be getting better grip oh yeah oh yeah oh we got uphill coming here 60 5.7 which is the exact same time I got on the previous run when uh, I was filming and the audio was all messed up. But anyhow, I'm gonna have to film from this uh, GoPro Hero session here and have it in this odd little angle. So it's kind of close to uh, my mouth so you guys can hear what I'm saying. The GoPros, you know, their audios are horrible unless you have an external mic. I mean, not horrible, but it, you hear a lot of road noise and stuff. So I do apologize about that. Now, since I last did an owner review, which was pretty much exactly a year ago, we had gotten two recall notices in the mail. The first one was for a possible missing or defective roll pin. So basically what that would mean is that I could park the truck in our driveway, which is slightly slanted, put it in park, get out, lock the, the vehicle, it could still roll down. Because if the parking pole is uh, defective, then uh, yeah, it doesn't keep the transmission in park. Now what we ended up finding out was that our truck was actually not one of the ones that was affected by this possible issue. So that's a good thing. The second recall was a possible fire hazard that would come from the B pillar or down here underneath the mat. There were cords that generated a lot of heat and they could catch fire. So uh, my buddy Brian actually at Moon Township 4 took care of this recall. So the solution to all this was to put heat resisting tape underneath those cords and on top of them as well. So those are the little issues. Other than that, the truck has been absolutely fantastic during the time that we've had it. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, we've taken it on several road trips. It runs great. Fuel economy isn't all that great though. Um, and again, I mean, they downsized two cylinders, added two turbos. Now granted, it has a lot of power, but uh, fuel economy is around 15.5 on both our trip meters here. So basically we're still getting V8 fuel economy, although on the highway, depending on how you drive, it can get up to 18.5, possibly touch 19 there, uh, if you're keeping it under 70 miles an hour. So these EcoBoost engines, my experience is that they're good on the highway. As soon as you're driving normal city driving, like I am now, they're absolutely horrible. They're worse than a V8. They suck gas like crazy. 
Now we mentioned that the uh, interior has held up pretty well. Quality of the leather in the seats is uh, pretty good. Now I guess it's normal but you can sort of tell on the steering wheel it's starting to take a little beating here after a year and a half. Now we got soft leather here in the door that's holding up pretty good as well. A little harder leather wrapped over plastic here but I have to say with uh, you know the three of us and Sydney sitting in the back and messing around and spilling food and stuff like that the interior holds up pretty good over time now what I should do is a video uh, going over all the features of the truck with my wife she's actually suggested that herself because there's so much in this truck that she doesn't even know how to use. I mean, it wasn't long ago that I kind of showed her that, you know, these are paddle shifters. You can shift manually and stuff like that. So that would be kind of funny. But speaking of these paddle shifters, I find myself when I'm driving the truck, never driving in manual mode and using these because this 10 speed automatic transmission, you know, while it was co-developed with GM and, you know, they have it in the ZL1 and, you know, the new GM trucks and stuff like that, it doesn't shift fast. I'm sure it's tuned differently for the ZL1 uh, Camaro, but it, you know, in the Raptor, just drive it in, in automatic. I mean, these look cool and all, but yeah, they're not very functional in my opinion. Now, while it is a Raptor and it's made for off-road, it's supposed to be this Baja King. I mean, it is pretty much fully loaded with every technical feature that Ford offers. We have adaptive cruise control, we have lane keeping system. It's got heated and cooled seats. This 360 camera is amazing. You get several different angles. You can use the backup camera. It's very clear to be Ford. I've always said that their backup cameras for the domestic brands and the vehicles in its class are very, very good. Now, one thing that we added since uh, the last owner review was the auto stop eliminator. This thing is amazing. I installed it myself. And what you can do is set this auto stop start function to always be on off. Now it reverts back to normal if you push this button, if you for some odd reason wanna have auto start stop uh, enabled. Now since I installed it, the company that makes these now have an upgraded version for several Lincolns and Fords. I'm going to link the video that I did down in the description. I'll put my link in there as well for anyone that wants to purchase this. They actually get 10% off. Now they have an easier system where it plugs into the diagnostics port. You don't have to take anything apart here and, and install it that way. So for the people that wanted to buy it last time, but they felt like, you know, I don't want to unplug and remove this whole panel here and unscrew a bunch of screws and then put it back together and stuff it's a lot easier now so check out the link in the description if you're interested that is to remove this auto start stop feature which i absolutely hate but we've had without it now for 11 months i think and it works flawlessly so as we hop outside real quick again the tires are holding up pretty well um, now they haven't been rotated in a little while so you can definitely feel that they're, it's like they're getting choppy There's more road noise while you're sitting inside the truck But I had these tires as some of you guys might remember for my black f-150 and they didn't work out Good at all for the wheels that I have on but with these stock wheels these tires have been great They just need rotated at the next oil change Now we already did a, a little performance test here, but what the Raptor lacks in sound from this kind of boring EcoBoost, it definitely makes up for in performance. This is an, a phenomenal engine. I mean, it really is performance wise. It just, you know, again, I, I know a lot of people think it's, uh, you know, I, I'm repetitive and this is all I talk about, like sound and sound and sound, but yeah, still missing the sound in our 2018 Ford Raptor. So we're back outside the truck <laughs> once again uh, while we end this video. I wanted to do it while we were driving it, but since I'm having some mic issues, uh, I'd rather use this camera right here. Now I wanted to add, with owning a Ford Raptor, this is a 2018, we bought it brand spanking new. It's stickered at around 69,000 and some change. If you go and look at Auto Trader for a 2018 equivalent to ours, the same equipment, 
same mileage, they're going for around $60,000. So with it being a Ford and only dropping $10,000 from its sticker price in 18 months, that's actually a great feature. You don't see a lot of vehicles from the Ford brand that holds its value like a Ford Raptor does. Now there's a lot of new trucks out there on the market from GM and Dodge that look fantastic. But again, I, I don't think there's any truck out there that can beat a Raptor just out of the box. Just look at this truck, it's absolutely gorgeous. But the ownership experience for us, except for minor, minor little issues with some recalls and stuff like that, has been great. So I wanted to keep this video kind of short because not much has really changed since we did the last owner review a year ago. We just added 10,000 more miles and also a lot more smiles. So I know that was cheesy, but I hope you guys enjoy, <laughs> enjoyed this video. If you did, you know what to do. Give it a huge thumbs up if you're stopping by for the first time and you haven't already and you want to. Please subscribe. There's a lot more Ford truck content coming from the channel. I do want to put this up against my supercharged F-150. So hopefully we can get that done here pretty soon. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.